Namaste. So today, um, I want to remind you guys of one of the most ancient and said to be most powerful mantras. A mantra means a seed. Mantra is an instrument or a tool to use for the mind to go beyond our ordinary or negative judgmental type of thinking. So sometimes the mantra is just a word like Om or Shanti. Sometimes it's a couple put together, Om So Hum, um, Om Mani Padmi Hum. And then there's much longer mantras. And this is one of the longer ones. This is probably, well, actually, I know it's one of the first Sanskrit chants that I learned because when I went to teacher training, we did this chant weekly and they also played it while the, well, they would play this or own, it depended, but they would even play these chants when they were cooking in the dining hall so that the vibrations and that high frequency of the energy held in the mantra could be infused within the food that we were going to, you know, excuse me, be nourishing our bodies with. And so when I came home from teacher training, I actually would sing this chant in the shower. And when my son was born, I would sing it as a lullaby to him at night. And by the time Gabriel was two years old, he was singing it with me. You don't have to memorize it, um, but it's called the Gyantra Mantra. I'm actually using this for the meditation this week as well. And I'm going to say it to you and then I will chant it to you. So it's Om Bor Bhuva Swa Om Tat Savitur Varaniyam Vargo De Vasya Dimahi Di Yo Yo Na Prachoriyat Om. So loosely translated to mean, um, may we meditate upon the one, the supreme ruler and creator of the universe may he or she enlighten our intellect. So I'll chant it to you now. Om Bhuva Swa Om Tat Savitor Varaniyam Vargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachoreat Om powerful when you can chant it because you can you know chant from your diaphragm muscle your core you can feel that reverberation coming up to the heart and with that mm, you can feel it even leaving the lips there can even be a little tingling that moves up into the head and there's this nice quiet silence afterwards so that's our little Dharma talk today. We're going to be doing a gentle flow practice. And I will remind you of this chant at the end. Let's begin. Let's go ahead and come to a comfortable seat. You can sit cross-legged. You do not have to sit on your heels. Just take a moment to refine your posture. And then once you feel aligned physically in a position that's going to provide some steady comfort and ease. Begin to place your attention to your breath. Noticing the inflow and outflow. The 
attempting to increase your intake of oxygen into your lungs. Exhale, fully release it out. Some of you have been working in professions that are keeping you masked. For good reason, but I want you to notice how much more freedom you feel without being covered. And I want to encourage you to open up your breath as much as possible. When you're in your home, when you're in the great outdoors, when you're in safe and clean environments. For this is a vital importance to our health. It's even the heart of yoga. Enjoy taking a few more deep breaths. Slowly begin to open up your eyes. Once you open up your eyes, you're going to come to standing Vajrasana. When you come to standing Vajrasana, make sure that your feet are extending back behind you and toes point back. And then we'll lean to one side, straighten one leg out. Sorry, Ringo. Lift the arms up. I switched his tail evidently. And then gently lean towards the straight leg. This is Paragasana Gate Pose. When you think of a gate, do you think of it being open or closed? Think of an open gate, an open opportunity. Opening you to something new. Think about opening up the gates to go within your heart. Find the beauty and treasures found there. And then inhale, bring it up to the top. And as you exhale, lunge that knee. It's like a kneeling form of warrior two. And then as you exhale, place your elbow to the knee and shine that other arm up. On your next inhale, come back up. And as you exhale, turn those toes to face forward and bring your hands underneath your shoulders. So we're gonna take Stargazer. So as you inhale, the same side where the leg is straight, sweep that arm out and up towards the heavens. Whatever part of your body is touching the floor, anchor down. Free up your breath. As you exhale, land that hand. Pause here and press back away from your wrist. Folding down like you would in child's, but that one leg stays extended. Inhale, bring it up. And exhale, lower that knee. 
Once you lower the knee, inhale, float your hands up, come up to standing Vajrasana. We'll extend the other leg out. We'll lift the arm shoulder height, flip that outer palm and curve to that side. Om Bhor Bhuva Swa Om Tat Savitur Vada Miyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yo Na Pracharya Om I just love Sanskrit, it sounds so poetic. And if you're a Sanskrit scholar watching this, don't hate me if, my, if I'm butchering it. It really is a love language of mine, so the intent is good. All right, inhale, let's come up. As you exhale, turn that foot 90 degrees, lunge that knee, take the kneeling form of warrior two. Affirming here, I joyfully manifest the power of my own strength. As you exhale, take the elbow down, kneeling form of side angle. You are sinking the hips forward and down. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, turn the toes and bring your hands underneath the shoulders. Make sure you crawl forward to provide nice length through the vertebrae. And then open up into your twist. Gazing up towards the sunshine or the starlight. You know you may be gazing up towards the ceiling, close your eyes and imagine you're outside. Becoming one with nature. As you take in this fresh oxygen from the trees and the plants that have provided it. Exhale, lower the hand down, gently rock back. You can always curl the back toes under if that helps to prop you up. And on your next inhale, rock up to that tabletop position, lowering the knee to the floor. We're going to take two blocks. We're going to stack the hands on top, but we're going to sink back like child's pose. Now look forward and make sure the hands are shoulder distance apart. Your head will angle between the arms. Your face will hover away from the floor. You're getting a deep stretch beneath the arms and into the pit of the arms where tons of lymph nodes reside. And they get a flush whenever we do deep stretching and deep breathing. Provide both to your body now. On your next inhale, rock up to hands and knees. We're going to turn the blocks higher. We're going to step the right foot through, taking Anjani Asana, a half lunge. Now, make sure that you're lunging your deepest with the knee aligned over the front ankle. And then as you exhale, you can flex the front foot, hang the hips back, and lean over the front leg into a half split. The blocks can walk closer to you if you need to build up higher. They can stay where they were if you have a little bit more flexibility. And then rock forward again to the sole of the foot, lifting the head, and then exhale, taking it to half split. Do one more. 
Inhale to half lunge and exhale to half split. Now come back to the sole of that foot, tuck the toes under on the back foot, lift that leg up in the air. Stay stationed here for just a moment and notice how much dependency and weight we put into our hands. So put that dependency and weight into your right foot. That's going to really fire up the front leg. Place your hands to Anjali Mudra prayer position at your heart. Take one more breath. Lower the hands down to the floor. Slowly start to straighten out the front leg. And if the blocks are too far forward, line them up alongside that front ankle. Roll the back hip forward, squaring the left hip with the right. Shine the heart forward, and then as you exhale, see if you can bow over. You can even place your forearms on top of the blocks to stabilize if you have more limberness available right now. Affirming as you hold, I give myself over to the flow of grace. So oh, why would you expect others to give you grace if you can't give yourself grace? So bring that home to yourself. If you drop down to the forearms, come back to flat hands, straight arms, lunge that front knee, turn and plant the back foot down, keep your right hand on that block and slowly open up to side angle. Roll down firmly to the outer edge of the back foot, and then try to glue the right knee towards the right arm. Notice the extra weight in the front foot compared to the back. So let's slowly come up and let's equalize it with the trunk aligned over the pelvis, the arms reaching out to the sides, gaze down the front fingertips, draw up through the navel center, up through your floating ribs. Bring that right hand down, then the left. Spin away from the back heel, land the back knee, shin and foot. Now take half Hanumanasana. Back to half lunge. And we'll do that two more times. Rock between the two poses at your own pace. And then we get to bring that right knee back. And we bring the right knee back. We'll step the left foot forward. We'll lunge that knee, taking half on Janyasana. Now we paused in this first couple uh, positions just to make sure we've got the correct alignment. So have the blocks alongside the left foot, left knee, right over the ankle as the hips sink low. And then as you exhale, flex the foot, lifting the toes off the ground and folding over the front leg. So this is where, remember, if you need the blocks to come closer to you, you can bring them in in order to build the head and heart up higher but you might be able to keep them where they were already stationed. All right, let's start to go a little faster. You can inhale, wrap forward into half on Janayasana, and exhale back to half Hanumanasana.
The next time you ground down on that front foot, curl the back toes, lift that back knee. You're holding this lunge position. And just like before, notice how we're dependent and put a lot of emphasis in the hand here, but we really don't need to. It's about the legs. So cement your left foot to the floor, fire up those hamstrings, bring the hands up to prayer position. Make sure you're not holding the breath. And then exhale, land your hands as well as your back foot. Keep the left hand as is, but then open up to your right side angle. Take the left knee towards the left arm, power down through the back foot, and then inhaling to warrior two. Gaze down the front fingers, set that drishti. Stay mindful of your breath. Exhale, take it to that side angle. Back to the lunge. Straighten out that front leg and hinge down. Bring the box back alongside the ankle. You may even feel compelled to sink to the forearms if that's available. Keep rolling the right hip forward. Om bor buvaswa, om tat sabitur vadanil. Bargo de Vasya de Mahi, de Yo Yo Na Prachoriat Om. Meditate upon the One, the true Creator of all the worlds. May He enlighten our intellect. Come back into the lunge, step back onto your hands. Sink the back knee, shin, and foot. And then we'll go back and forth a couple more rounds. Between half lunge and half split. Half lunge. Half split. And then bring that left knee back, bring the blocks down, sit back towards your heels, stack the elbows on top, palms together, crawl the elbows forward and out. Now we're going to stretch the triceps. Those three thin muscles under the arms. Also a good stretch for the shoulders. Inhale slowly. We're gonna stack those blocks off to the side for now. Slide your hands out so that you can rock up to hands and knees, curl your toes under, launch into Adamulka Svanasana, your downward facing dog. Now from your downward facing dog, no, actually notice first before we move the hands back. Grip your hands into the mat, notice the distance between your hands and feet. And as you press down to the balls of the feet, notice the elevation of your heels. Okay, take all this in. Because we're going to walk the hands back towards the feet, lowering down over the lower body, shaking the head slowly. Okay. 
From Uttanasana, we'll walk the hands back down the mat. We'll stop and lift up and back to downward facing dog again. Create that same position with your body. Similar measurements, doesn't have to be precise. And now walk your hands back towards the feet. Land your heels. Soften your knees if you feel like your body's requesting that. Bringing the hands out again. Push up and back out on Mukha Svanasana. Now this time we're walking the feet forward towards the hands. Bow over upon arrival. Go through your neck. Next inhalation, sweep the arms to your sides and up overhead. And exhale, bring hands home sweet home, down into the heart. All right, we're going to spread at the base of the left foot. We're gonna bend the right knee and open it to the side. And if you need to be here with the heel resting above the ankle on the other side, totally fine. If you want to bring it up to your calf or on up to the thigh, be here. Bring your hands to your hips. Try to level and even them out. Gaze at one spot. Affirming, I am calm, I am poised. All right, we're going to take that foot to the floor if it's not already. We're going to create Gyana Hand Mudra, okay? So Gyana Hand Mudra, Gyantra Mantra. So there's a little piece of wisdom in there. The root word is the same. Take the outer arm upward and let the hand, other hand slide down the inner part of the thigh towards the knee. And breathe. Inhale up. Exhale, release the arms and your foot. All right, let's broaden the base of the left foot. And your right knee. Or, excuse me, I'm saying right, left, but I'm hearing you. Broaden the base of the right foot, stand on the right leg, open up from your left hip. All right. I don't know, is it just me? My communication has not been solid for about a week now. And I'm almost curious to look up Mercury in retrograde. Maybe it's just me. Set your gaze. Stay intentional with your breath. Affirming I am calm. And I am poised. Oh, I about lost my poise. <laughs> All right, let's sink that foot to the floor. Gyana hand mudra. And this time we'll add in the Gyantra mantra. So right arm up, left hand slide down the inner part of the leg. Om bor buva swa. Om tat sabitur varanini. 
Bardo de Vasyati Mahi, the Yo Yo Na Prachoriat Om. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. And let go, walk it out. All right, we're going to separate the feet about hip width. We're going to come down like squat. Okay, if you need to stop in bear pose, I'm going slow. My body is so sore and blissful flow. We did something called the dragon dance. Some of y'all may have done that with me. I don't know if you were sore. Maybe it was because I did it a couple times in one day. All right, we're gonna release the hands. We're gonna come on down to the floor. We're gonna take the left leg up, the right foot to the inner thigh, Janu Shashasana. Reach the arms up overhead. Now what we're gonna do is when we come down, because I know a lot of you can actually grab the foot. Really, don't worry if you can, it's really not a big deal. But if you can, I want you to try a certain hand motion. Take your right hand to the pinky toe side and then cross your left hand over to the big toe side. Drive the elbows forward, your heart forward, and then find your edge of flexibility wherever that is. Inhale, we'll come up. Once we come up, we're lifting the right knee. We're clasping the left arm around it. We're lifting up through the chest that's sinking down through the shoulders, stacking the hand behind us and twirling up the spine. Breathe with more clarity. And exhale, release. All right, we're gonna slide the right leg out. We'll bend the left knee, turn open from that hip, Janu Shashasana, lifting the arms overhead on the inhale, folding on the exhale, stop at any point along the way that fits you, or take the right hand to the big toe side if you can easily access the foot, left hand to the pinky toe side, the elbows will fan out as you drive forward and down. And by the breath. Inhale, come up. Elevate the left knee. Hook the right arm around it. Lift up through the chest. Drop down through the shoulders. Spin all the way up into your neck. Exhale, unwind. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, fan the knees open and apart, lift up through the crown and fold right down the center, right in the direction of your heels. In 
inhale, come up. And once you come up, you're gonna lift your right, excuse me, your left knee, slip your right foot just behind that, lace your hands to the sole of the foot, and slowly lift the heel off the floor. And you can use a strap or a belt if your hands can't quite reach your foot. This is Heron Pose. Now, release that foot, lift your right knee, slip your left foot behind that ankle, take your hand hold around the foot, lift the heel, straighten the leg as best you can, but remember it's better for the back to be straight over the leg. Because you can still have the knee bent and lift through the heel and still work into your hamstrings. So release, we're gonna bring ourselves down to the floor, onto the forearms, lifting the chest up, floating the feet up, point your toes and hold and breathe. Now point the toes, continue to lift the legs, but they're at an angle. So it's like a modified or gentle form of Navasana boat. Gaze towards the big toes, the Padiola Grandrishi. Now we're gonna land the feet down to the floor. We're gonna slide the arms forward. We're gonna puff the chest up, take the head back. Keep pressing through the elbows by lifting the fingertips skyward if you need it. It does make it easier. I would suggest it. Elbows push down, heart lifts up. Exhale, lift your head, lower down to the back side. Hug your left knee into your belly and chest. Release that side. Take your right knee. Release that foot. Hopefully your blocks are close by because we're gonna rest in refined butterfly. You can use a bolster under the knees if that's your preference. You can do this with the rolled up towel or blanket, wrapping it over the feet and then tucking up underneath your calves. I would suggest hands resting on the body. Five to seven deep breaths before minimizing your control.
Count your next seven breaths. Extra seven. Slowly draw the knees back in, feet apart. And cup a hold of both knees. Wrapping your arms around with metta, loving kindness towards yourself. Remain here in stillness and breathe. And turn to one side of your body. Come on up to take a seat. And sit comfortably with your eyes open or closed for now. I always share with you, I'm sharing this with the people who are doing the meditation this week, that um, someone in our community had come to me. She was actually Indian. And she was covering her ears during Shavasana while I was playing this chant, the Gyantra Mantra. And so um, I called her after class and I said, I noticed you were holding your ears. And, and I said, was it too loud? Because I had turned it up. And she said, no, it's just women are not supposed to chant that song. And it was a female artist who was singing it. And so I realized there were two or three other Indian uh, people in the class. And I saw them later that week or I was able to catch them as they were going out the door. And so I offered an apology. I was like, my apologies. I didn't know this you know, person told me it was offensive. And um, I was like, that was not my intention whatsoever. I'd never heard this. And two of those students said, no, I don't know what she's talking about. It's fine. And uh, one of the men that were there said there was actually an ashram that was all women in India. And he said they play and chant this Gyantra Mantra all the time. So then I felt like it gave me permission to chant it again. So if anyone is knowledgeable about that and watching this and if this is offensive to you for any reason please let me know and i do apologize but like i said i checked with several other people and they said that they had never heard that and it was fine so like i said it's one of my favorites and the other thing i wanted to share uh, nanesh shaw who was part of our community um, at one time he was sharing that he was working with NASA and talking to a couple of the astronauts that's up in space and they have been playing this Gyantra Mantra. Um, I'm not sure where the space, shut, uh, space station maybe, anyway, I'm not sure. Um, but I thought that was really, really cool. So we're gonna close out and I'm gonna chant it one more time. Please be sure to uh, download one of these if you can look it up on one of the music forums, even YouTube has the Yantra Mantra. This is something you can infuse your home with, your car with, um, meditate with. All right, let's sit quietly. Om Babu Vaswa 
Om Tat Sabitor Varaniyam Bargo Devasya Jimahi Dio Yona Prachoreat Om We meditate upon the one, the supreme ruler of this world. May they enlighten our intellect. The light that we meet honors and bows to the beautiful radiant light within you. Namaste.